We're going for McLaurin. We're going for McLaurin again over the What's good, everybody? And we're back. As you can see from the hat, from the whistle, we're going to be doing a chaos coaching day, but it's going to be a little bit different. We're still going to be coaching. That's not going to change, but it's going to be a little bit longer of a video. and It's going to be a little bit less edited. So we're still going to cut it down. But as far as sound effects, zoom, stuff like that, we're going to be doing a lot less editing of that. A lot less of that. We're still going to do those in all of our other videos. That's not going to change. But for these ones, I wanted to try a little bit less edit. It'll allow me to have a longer video, do a little bit more coaching, and really just focus on that. If you enjoy these types of videos, if you want me to do this more, please hit that like button for me. It helps me out, and it just helps tell me that you want to see more of this, right? If you don't, go ahead and let me know in the comment section. We'll go back to the way we do it where we edit pretty much all of our videos. But I want to try it this way for the chaos coaching. And since it's going to be a longer video, I don't want to keep this intro going any longer than it needs to be. Let's take a look at the lineup. Starting off here, the lineup hasn't changed too much. We did upgrade Josh Allen with that new Team of the Week upgrade that came out. But outside of that, there really haven't been too many changes to our lineup. We have Reggie Bush as our starting running back still. We have Raheem Mostert, who we're able to put out wide in that middle spot if we would like to. We have Terry McLaurin as our wide receiver number one. We have DK Metcalf as our wide receiver number three. But again, I mentioned in the last video that we don't really play DK Metcalf too often. I'll explain why here in a, in a bit. We have Stefan Diggs as our wide receiver number two. And then we have Darren Wall as our starting tight end. Now, Vernon Davis is actually the person that we start in that middle spot instead of DK Metcalf. I like to have the tight end there. We can audible down to different formations like single back wing flex close. And then again, I already mentioned we can put Mostert there as well to audible to a couple different formations with the new personnel audibling. So the O-line hasn't really changed. We have Orlando Pace. That's probably going to be the next upgrade that we make. Now that the power-ups are a little bit cheaper, I believe they put them into packs now. Those power-ups should come down, so we'll upgrade Orlando Pace here soon. I went over in the last video that we have these team chems at 25 out of 50 in order to get that plus one speed on all Cardinals and all Niners teams. However, I think I'm going to be changing this in the near future. I'm not 100% 100 sure what I'm going to be changing to. I do plan on changing those teams. I had the Cardinals before because we had Kyler Murray and we were able to run that quarterback draw, but we don't really run quarterback draw much anymore. So I'm probably going to change that up soon. Free safety, we have Micah Hyde. Tyran Matthew is a backup. And then I went over the defense, how not every starter is actually a starter for us. And I'll touch on that here in a bit as well. We have Taylor Mays as our strong safety starting. We have Adrian Wilson as well. Cornerbacks, ERC. Denzel Ward, Deion Sanders, and then Antonio Cromartie, who actually plays free safety for us a lot of the time. Now you see here, we actually don't start a lot of these defensive linemen. We don't start our right outside linebacker here. Going over to specialists, we have Lawrence Taylor who starts. We have uh, Javon Kurtz who starts. So we have different players that actually aren't in the starting lineup, but they're actually the ones who start for us. The reason why we did that is for those team cans, which I already mentioned, because we needed to start players that match that Cardinals or match that Niners theme team. And ones that didn't, we put in the specialists so that we could still have them on the team. Like Lawrence Taylor doesn't match. Javon Kurtz doesn't match. But we were able to put them there. Another one, Sneed, who will play at safety a lot of the time as well. So just players that didn't match those teams, we put into the specialists in order to still fit them on the team. Team strategy hasn't changed. We're still in the Raiders offense. And then we're still going to be in this 4-6 defense. Those haven't changed at all. That is it for the team. Let's jump into the game. Here we go with game one. You see our team. You see their team. The plan for this video is to just try to play as many games as we can. Try to coach as much as I can. Here we go. They're coming out in this gun doubles. And with the first drive, I try to just... Ooh, nice hit. I try to just do a feel-out drive, right? We try to see what they want to do. They like to pass the ball. They like to run the ball. Or they like to pass the ball deep, pass the ball short. Just trying to feel out what our opponent likes to do. And kind of going from there. Oh, no. Can we knock that out? Nice knockout, Dion. Great job. All right, so yeah, again, just trying to fill out what they want to do. First uh, first pass play they did, they tried to go deep. That's noted, right? So we got to be able to look out for that uh, going down the line. Just continue to try not to give up any deep passes. Oh, it's, oh, that was a nice that was a nice run play. There was a lot of a lot of gaps there. I was not ready for that run play. Okay, so I'm going to try to shoot the gap this time. I wasn't really running, uh, ready for that, but they're like there was a gap there to shoot. Okay, now they're passing. Continue to mix. They're doing a good job mixing up right here. Can, ah, not going to get there. Ooh, they have Steve McNair. So some things I want to know is Steve McNair has hot route masters. So that means they can put extra routes in the field that they pretty much on any player that they want to. They might not have been able to do before. So those nice post routes, those nice corner routes, stuff like that. Taylor Mays, nice hit. I early on in games when I'm going against the run, I'm trying to shoot the gap, right? That's my first goal against the run. If I can shoot the gap, get some tackles in the backfield, that's the way I want to do it to start the game. Now, if they show me runs that I can't shoot the gap on, I try not to stick to that. Ooh, really nice route from Metcalf. I, I'm not sure. Ooh, no, can we catch it? Good tackle. I'm not sure if that was the hot route master 
or uh, a play, to be honest with you. But yeah, what I was going to say was I try to shoot the gap first. If they show me runs that I can't shoot the gap on, I try to get away from it. Now, I'm not... Oh, I Sometimes I don't do that. I don't get away from it, which I... All right. Great drive by our opponent starting off the game. We got dotted the whole way down the field. But if I if I can't if I can't shoot the gap, I want to finish this. If I can't shoot the gap, typically what I'm gonna try to want to do is just get away from it. Just try to play solid run defense. Oh, oh, we were in safe. We were in safe. I I honestly come out in safe every single time, just to, uh, just in case, right? Because I'm not gonna try to block the field goal because usually you're not gonna get it anyways. But I want to encourage you not to try to shoot the gap if it's not working because you're going to end up giving bigger gains than you need to just play a solid run defense if you can't shoot the gap and that's coaching for myself too because a lot of the time i don't do it which i really should now i'm going on the offensive side of the ball i already did this on defense uh which is just doing your coach adjustments i'm going to conservative here and then also uh doing your audibles right doing your audibles is super important whatever audibles that you like i'm not going to tell you what audibles to use whatever audibles you like I would encourage you to do so. I'm actually going to take a timeout here after I do it. But and I didn't set my coach adjustments on defense. But I like to see that first. Like if they want to go deep, I'll probably put 25 yard purple stuff like that. But I kind of wait to see that one out. But on offense, I changed the conservative right away. I set my audibles. Let's see how we can do on this first drive. Now, since we're not on a hash mark, I typically like to run the ball just to try to get to a hash mark. Plays are going to work differently from each hash. So I try to just not stay in the middle of the field. And I actually forgot to do this sub to put Vernon Davis in so we can do our audibles down. But uh, I was just encouraging you to do that. I said, do yourselves, do your audibles. I didn't do it. But yes, yeah, I like to pass from hash marks pretty much only. If I'm not on a hash, I try to only run the ball. I, my, one of my sayings is if I'm, there's a new saying that I started a little bit ago. If I'm not on a hash, I'm not going to pass. That's, that's one of my sayings. I try to stick with it just because it can be, a, it can be really difficult to pass the ball when what you've labbed up has been on a hash mark and then you're in the middle of the field because that's kind of uncontrollable when you're in the middle. You could be a little bit to the side, but not quite in the middle, every, anything like that. Oh, nice catch. Oh, I thought we had it. All right, that was in double. That was in double coverage. So the, the matchup nightmare didn't look like it lit up right there. Um, oh, it did light up, but it kind of got counteracted by having a second person there. Fourth and inches here. I'm going to uh, I'm gonna pass the ball. I, if, if, I was, if I was in a tournament, I probably would have ran the ball in third and inches. But I try to pass the ball in fourth and inches here just because they're probably expecting run or expecting going short. I'm going to have a couple of deep routes, and hopefully one of them gets open. We should have Diggs out there. Great route from Diggs. You know, early on in this one, I feel like I'm actually just talking a lot. Hopefully, what I'm saying is helpful for you. You can let me know in the comment section if I'm talking too much or just I just need to like, ooh, great run defense. I just need to not talk nearly as much and just kind of break down little things or continue to try to break down as much as I can. Let me know. It's really what you all prefer. Uh, so we're just going to take that one to the end of the quarter. We're still uh, feeling out uh, this drive on defense just like we were doing on offense. I mean, excuse me, just on offense, just as we were doing on defense. Simply because you don't know what they're going to want to do throughout the entire game. So you try to get a feel early on. It looks like they've been playing a lot of man coverage. So if they stick with that, we'll try to continue to put man beating routes out there. Are we going to have McLaurin? I'm going to try it. I'm going to try it. McLaurin! McLaurin! Yes, let's go! It's definitely nice to answer with a touchdown after giving up a touchdown. You don't want to fall behind early on in the game. It's going to be an R ball at halftime. So this is kind of, kind of, it's going to be a big drive. If we can get a stop and a score before halftime, we'll be in a position where we can go up two possessions. But if not, they're going to be in a spot where they're going to have the lead and they're going to ha kind of have control. So this is a big, ooh, this is a big, big possession right here. We're on a third down. This is going to be an important play for later on. We're going to get their probably one of their best passing plays, one of the ones they're most comfortable with. And we'll be able to note that for later. So here we go. Drag. Oh, I, I gave that up again. I gave the running back up wheel both times. Both times. That's my uh, assignment. So what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to man up one of my players to that running back. So I don't have to watch for it anymore. I don't want to have to worry about it. And there we go. We actually have the man coverage. Good job, Denzel Ward. So right there, twice we've been hit with a route that was our assignment. That's one of the biggest things when you're using. Knowing what your assignment is. Whether if you're in zone, knowing your zone. If you're in man knowing where your man is, right? Those things are important. So I need to keep that in mind. Otherwise, I'm going to probably just keep getting dotted by the same player. Oh, is that open? Is that open? Oh, that that was super close to being a laser. I'm going to note that for later to try to make sure we're not going to give that up. This is our deep half right there that was on that. So what I was just saying was just knowing your assignment. So if I'm on the running back and I'm going to be using different parts, I don't want to be using the running back. If I want to use it in the middle of the field, I need to do someone to replace my assignment, manning up that person, the running back, maybe putting them, putting someone in a zone to go where that running back is going to go. So they were going out to the right. I could put uh, like a linebacker or an end in a flat zone or something like that. Right. So just different things like that, trying to replace what you're doing, uh, knowing what you're doing with your user. Right. So let's like look in here. 
I'm on the running back. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to man someone up to the running back. Now I don't have to worry about it. Oh, that's a dot. That's a super dot. I got to be on that. The middle of the field is mine right there. If I don't have to worry about the running back, the middle of the field is going to be my assignment. So this is a this is a fun, this is an exciting game starting off right here. We have a good game going on right here. Let's see if we shoot the guy with Maze. We're getting some hit sticks. We might force a fumble. They might be on conservative, so we might not force a fumble. But we're getting some chances here at it. I'm going to quickly here adjust to put the running back. Uh, excuse me. Yeah, I want to man up someone on the running back, so I don't have to worry about it. Now I have, to, I have to worry about the tight end. The tight end's mine. The tight end's mine. Laser again. Ah, we are just getting dotted. Whenever they needed a dot, they've gotten one. We're near the red zone now, so I don't have to worry about any deep blues on this crosser. We have a zone there for the running back. Good tackle. Ah, I, didn't get my, I didn't get my deep blues adjusted to yellows. I can give them the dust of the yellows. All right, let's go this sec. I probably should have been taking timeouts earlier. I probably should have used both of them. We're going to use one there because we're going to get the ball back here before half. If I had used one early, we probably would have saved ourselves 30 seconds or so. We'll still have 31 seconds. We'll still have a timeout. So that's a chance to get three. That is a chance to get three. If we can do that, we'll meet in the spot to maybe go up eight going after halftime. We'll see what we can do. Now, I know I said my rule was is if I'm not on a hash, I try not to pass. But with the time being what it is, Take that slant route, call timeout. We kind of have to pass there. We can't really afford to run the ball, gain a few yards, and then have to use our last timeout with no, with almost no gain, right? So that's why we did that here. Now I'm going to try to pick up a big chunk, maybe going towards the sidelines. And we'll see if we can do that here, but we kind of have to pass there. We kind of have to pass there. Now, if it was early in the first half, again, I'll, I'll probably just run the ball, but you got to play time and score as well. Now, if we can get a field goal here, that would be really, really big. Got our zig route. Can we get out of bounds with digs? All right, and there's a catch. All right, we need about, I think if you get to like the, what are we aiming for? Like the 39, the 39 is doable. Maybe the 38 we want to aim for. About that 55, 56 mark is pretty much your range if you have uh, the top kicker. So that's what we're aiming for. We're going to have our table. We're going to have our table. Reg, Reg, we're out of bounds again for the 45. So we need about five to six right here. Five to six is what we're looking for. But keep in mind, you don't want to do anything that's going to not get you out of bounds like you can't get five or six and knock it out of bounds so we'll rather throw the ball away here than do anything else like right here oh actually no i was gonna say we're gonna throw the ball away but we're gonna roll with josh allen i think that's field goal range 38 all right that's why i said we were about what we were aiming for let's see if we can make 55 yards let's we'll see what the wind's looking like we actually have three miles per hour wind on our side i probably should have noted that earlier but since we have that we should be able to make this kick and if we can do that we'll go into halftime with a lead here and we got it all right we're going to go into halftime with the lead here. As long as we don't give up a kick or a turn, we'll definitely take that end. So again, we're starting this half on offense here. Definitely love the way that that half ended. Now we're going to call this uh, this fair catch right here in the end zone. So it's going to be a touchback. And I already said it. I'm going to say it again. I'll try not to say it anymore in the video. We are not on a hash, but we don't want to pass. We're going to audible down here to the single back wing flex close. We're just going to call a stretch. See what their run defense is looking like. It, good, it looked good the first time we ran it, right? It looked good the first time we ran it. Let's test it again. See if they do a good job again. If they do, then great. We'll go away. To, we'll go to a different run next time. But if it doesn't work, uh, if it doesn't stop it, then we'll go back to it. Again, that was like really good run defense. I probably won't go to that run anymore. We'll go to some other ones. They're not really pinching the line. So maybe go to like something like a dive, something like that. So a lot of different things we can look at here. But again, they, they haven't really came out of this man coverage. So we're just going to continue to put man beating routes out there. I like to have a man beating route that's going deep like a deep threat to make sure that they're keeping their deep zones out there, uh, like some type of deep zone out there. And then also some short stuff to make them lurk low and or put some zones to stop the short stuff. So allowing us to have both kind of opens up the game to make them, to force them to do different things. We should have our corner route right here. Nice route from Waller. So that was actually zone that time. However, it looks like they're lining up in a man line defense once again here. There's no corner on the outside of the right. That's how we can tell that in a nickel 335, the outside corner would be on the right side here if they were in zone so they're in man coverage man coverage did a great job though the man coverage did a great job just throw the ball away just got to throw the ball away there so that's how we're able to tell us man coverage we're gonna have to keep, continue to note where those outside corners are lining up so they're back in the man coverage it looks like so we're gonna go back to the play that i talked about before where we have a couple short man beating routes and we have a couple uh well we have one deep route that we can beat over the top with to make them force them to guard both force them to guard both we're going for McLaurin. We're going for McLaurin again over the top. McLaurin over the top again. Let's go. Now, what we're looking to do on this defensive possession is to make them work as hard as possible to drive the ball. Great job, LT. Make them work as hard as possible 
to drive the ball here. We, we want to make them take as much time as they can. And then if we can keep them from getting seven, that puts us in a really good spot to try to win the game. Now, we've been getting hit with this running back wheel before. We've been getting hit with that running back wheel. So we're going to man it up here. Okay, it was a run. Nice tackle, Taylor Mays. I wasn't ready to shoot the gap on that. Taylor Mays made the play for me, but we're ready for that running back wheel here. I'm, I'm quickly manning up with someone else. I don't want to watch that myself. I want to watch the center of the field. I want to be watching for slants, for drags, for posts going across the middle. I don't have to worry about the running back. So it's manned up here on this crosser. Send it, send it. Yes. All right. Fourth down here. I already mentioned this on a long third down before. And I'm going to say it again. We're probably going to get their most comfortable passing play right here. So whatever that is, I want to note that for later. Right? So if we're in a fourth, like a fourth quarter drive, laser. Okay. So I'll put a flat out there next time. Now, we're, if we're in a fourth quarter drive, I'm going to put something there to stop it. I'm actually going to put something there to stop it now. I'll put a purple there. I'm watching for the running back. Now, you've probably noted I haven't changed my uh my zone drops to 25 or 20 or anything like that yet because they haven't really hit us with too many crossers they haven't they haven't hit us with too many po like post routes to go all the way across the field deep corner routes the so the, the default purple should do fine here i'm gonna continue to stick to that until they show until they start like doing some more deep passes i'm gonna try to shoot the gap oh couldn't do it i'm gonna note next time we go to that formation that we're not gonna be able to shoot the gap on it ah good tackle good tackle so I'm not going to be able to shoot the gap on that one anymore. I'm going to try to play more solid run defense if they come out in that formation again. Just trying to note different things here. That's all I'm really trying to do. Just trying to note different things. We're going to continue to try to get a stop here. So they're back in this doubles here. When they were in this doubles before, they had a corner route outside. And that's a deep corner route. That's the first one that they've hit us with that's gone over the top of the default purple. So now I'm not going to do it here since we're in the seven yard line. But next drive, I'm going to probably change it to maybe 15, maybe 20. Uh, that goes a little bit deeper than the default. Oh, nice run play. Really nice run play. Great drive. We did not do what our goal was going into that drive, right? Which was to make them work. We didn't do it. We really didn't do it. So what we're going to do here is try to stop this two-point conversion. I'm going to put some yellows out there. We don't need any deep blues. And then if we can do that, good tackle. Now we have the lead. And if we go get seven right here, we'll be up two possessions, regardless of giving up that score or not. We wanted to make them work. If we had done that, it would be a little bit better because as you see, if we had the ball with a lead late in the game, we might be able to clock it. 53 seconds left in the third. That's a tough clock. So we're going to try to get seven here. If we can do that, we'll be up two possessions. Now, I'm not going to say it, but we're in the middle of the field here. We're going to go to a different run. The stretch has been getting, has been getting stopped. So we're going to go to this jet sweep. We'll see if they can get out there for that. That looked like good run defense. That looked pretty good. Now, we're going to get some yards. We're going to get some yards on it, but that linebacker was there to make the play right they were very very close so i probably won't go back to that either probably just gonna stick with the dive or just inside zone out of trips tight end from now on for our run plays but i want to i want to test it right the plays that can get you more yards like a stretch or a jet sweep those things going outside i want to test those before i go to like the dive where it's, it's usually not going to be a touchdown run or a big gain so those are the ones i like to test first and kind of go from there oh nice job waller great route so again that's what i'm trying to do there now they're in this man to man if they don't change up, I'm going to probably continue to do what I was saying to do before, which was put deep routes in the field, one deep route, and put some uh, shorter stuff that's going to beat man coverage as well and make them choose what they're going to give up. Are they going to give up the deep route or are they going to give you the short stuff underneath? And that's actually going to go to the core. I'm not going to get this playoff. So that's what we're doing. Just continue to test them. What zones are they going to put out there to stop our man beating routes? Hopefully I haven't been sounding redundant about what I'm talking about. This is actually zone. I think we have Waller. Waller. Oh, that was so close. They actually went to zone there. But yeah, hopefully I haven't been sounding redundant about what I'm saying about their, their man coverage and things to do, just because this is gonna be zone here, by the way, the outside corners lining up outside. Because, oh, nice job with the zone. That was not a good read, not a great read. What, they, what, they're, what zones they're putting out there in their man coverage is really important. Man coverage itself isn't gonna stop you all, all the time. They have to put certain zones out there to stop whatever man coverage beating routes you have, whether it be crossers, corner routes, deep posts, things like that. So whatever ones they're putting out there, you have to counter them by putting the other ones out there great route from Diggs. Now a couple players on the team were a little bit tired here. Diggs and Waller were both tired so I'm going to actually go to inside zone right here. Just run the ball. Allow them to get a break. No, not send them out on routes and give them a chance to get their uh, energy back. Another thing you can do. Now going back and forth here isn't going to get them their energy back. That's not what it's doing but it's allowing you to check and see as they get their energy back. So they went from yellow to, to light blue there. So now I feel more comfortable passing the ball from that and they're in man coverage here. Noting that. Um but yeah, so going back and forth there just allows you to see it. So you don't have to waste any extra time in the huddle that you don't want to. And we're just gonna we're gonna go to this play where we have a couple short routes, a couple deep rounds, well, one deep round, and we'll see how it goes. And we got McLaurin. McLaurin. McLaurin has made plays 
all day for us on offense. As long as we make this extra point, we will be up two possessions, which is going to put us in the, pretty much the same mindset on defense that we were in before. Make them work as hard as possible to drive down the field, make them take as much clock as we can. We didn't do it before. We're going to try it here again. Now I'm actually going to go into my coach adjustments here. I said before I wanted to put my purples on 20 just to see. I said around 15 or 20. We'll start with 20 just to see. We don't want to give up for those deep passes. And being able to put those purples out there should help us to do that. I'm going to put a purple out there. We have something in the deep middle. Just not, not give up any deep passes over top. We're shading over top as well. I'm watching the running back here. Make a tackle. Ah, that's me. That's me. That's me. I have to be closer. I have to be closer. I'm actually going to adjust to put someone on the running back. I don't want to have to watch that myself. Uh, I'm usually a little bit better about that. I have not done a great job today, so we're going to do it now. Oh, 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 nope. Didn't, <laughs> didn't do it again. Didn't get the adjustment right, so I have to watch it. I have to watch it. Great job, LT. Now, part of the reason why I haven't done it every single play here is the more pass rushes you have, the less time they're going to have, just like you saw there. But I, can, I can't continue to send four and then just not watch the running back myself. I have to be able to do that. So I'm doing it now. We have someone manned up to the running back. We have the purple out there. We have the deep blue. So I'm just watching here. Have something that covers over the top. Watching the playmaker. Yes. All right. Long third down here. I don't want to give up anything deep again. I'm going to do the exact same thing. The exact same thing. We have a purple out there. We have a deep, uh, deep middle. And then I have someone on the running back. That's all we need to do. Now it allows me to just alert the middle of the field the entire time. I don't have to worry about anything else. If they get to the sideline, I do actually have to check the, the, the right uh, sideline. But yeah, here we go. I'm on the middle. I'm on the middle. And we're going to get that pick from a Camardi. All right. Now, the play here is probably just to go out. Yeah, the play here is to go out. We'll take their timeouts. And then if we don't get a first down, we'll kick the field goal. Or if we're even close enough, we can go for it since it's a two-possession game. But if we get the first down, we pretty much win the game. If we don't get the first down, I don't mind kicking three. I don't mind going for it just depending on the yardage situation of where we're at and how close we are to getting the first down. We don't want to get our kick blocked. That's one thing. Especially being up two possessions, you don't want to give them... A, a block kick and a free touchdown opportunity right so if we're close enough i'll probably go for it even if we're not close enough i might still go for it i'll just kind of have to think about that as we go here also gonna make sure i'm taking it down to zero one on the play clock pretty much every single time before i hike it doesn't look like they're calling their timeouts so if they're not calling timeouts we'll be able to take this thing all the way down here and be able to win the game just calling one last play here we should be able to take most of the clock and we're gonna be able to get the first down anyways so that's gonna that's gonna do it for this game Great game to our opponent. They made us work the entire time. They they dotted us the majority of the game on offense. And then defensively, again, made us work. I, I made a couple bad reads that could have been picks for sure. And then, but that great game to them. We're on to game two. Here we go with game two. You see our team. You see their team. It should be a good one. We're actually going to be starting this one on offense here. That's cool. We started the last one on defense. It's actually nice. They sky kicked here. So we're actually going to just start on a hash. So we're going to come out passing the ball right away. I already showed you all the audibles. I showed you all the coach adjustments before. We'll jump right into it. This is a whole new game now. So we're pretty much starting over as far as doing the feel out drive and all of that. It looks like it's zoned here. But we pretty much start over, right? Because the, the stuff that we talked about last game, what our opponent was doing, changes all up. Because this person might not play the same way. Now, that was actually man coverage. But it looked like zone to me, so I'm not sure if they're starting in man coverage, uh, audibling into zone, changing their players from man to zone, whatever the case may be. But it, looked, it did show man to man there in the uh, last play, but it looked like zone coverage. Again, they're that like a little bit of a hybrid, so they're playing a little bit of zone, a little bit of man. So they're, they didn't blitz either because it says blitz down there, but they didn't blitz as far as I know. So it looks like what they're doing is they're just calling different man coverage plays, getting that man coverage alignment and then putting zones out there. So it's going to be important to know what zones they're putting out there. So they have, looks like a vertical hook there. Can Diggs get that? Nice catch, Diggs. But they have a vertical vertical hook there on the tight end side. And I wasn't able to look at the right side, but just continuing to try to pick up here on what zones they're putting out there. Because that's what's going to matter. That's where we're going to put our man coverage uh, beating routes to attack different parts of the field that aren't where they're putting the zones out. So we're not going to like put a man beating route at that vertical hook. Right here, we put pretty much no zone beating routes out there that we're going to work right there so let's throw the ball away now i know i said vertical hook from the linebacker but it could have been a hook curl just really just the yellow out there that's all i was really noting oh oh nothing's open again ah we don't want to force any mistakes down here we'll take three on the first drive of the game first drive of the game you don't want to make any mistakes especially when you're in this territory to score because you don't know what they're going to do on offense right so before you get that look it's important not to turn the ball over and just try to get as many points as you can we'll see what we do on this play maybe we'll end up going for it if we picked up a lot of yards doing this playmaker yeah we're just gonna we're just gonna take our three again 
Not, not the worst thing on the first drive because we don't know what they're going to do on offense. Now, if they come down the field and score seven real quick on us, then that changes down here, right? That changes the way we, our little bit of a mentality when we're in the red zone. We'll see what they do on offense. Here we go. They're starting off this game. They actually came out in trips, tight end, offset, and audible to gun bunch. Nice read right there. They audible into the gun bunch. We'll see if they're going to actually stay in that trips, tight end, offset, or if they're going to just use it for an audible. We'll learn as the game goes on here. But if they stay in this, uh, if they stay in this trips tight end offset, it's important to note they don't have the same routes that trips tight end does. It's going to be different, right? It's not going to be the same plays, and that's important. Going from playbook to playbook, having that knowledge of what each playbook has, what each formation has, can really be helpful because it know it shows you early on before the game even starts what you have to stop, right? For example, if they're in trips tight end, I know where the crosses are coming from. I know where possible corner routes or posts might be coming from. If they're in trips tight end offset, that's going to change a little bit. So that's all I'm trying to get uh, talk about here. Now they're audibly into this gun bunch again. Before they hit, they hit us with a pretty quick flat over the uh, for a big gain. So when we're going to have man coverage over there, we hopefully won't give that up here. Watching this slant. We swapped that LT. Good job. Now LT was out in the flat right there. We're just trying to cover up any holes in our defense that man coverage can be right so we had a flat on that left to try to stop anything going that way you have the post there again oh good knockout we're just trying to cover up any gaps in our defense where the man coverage is we're in man coverage but knowing where okay a post might get open here a slant might get open here knowing those areas that can pretty much tell you what zones you want to put out there to try to stop those routes and then you can you try to use her the rest yourself so that's what we're really doing when we're in man coverage Oh, I think we have this post going across the field. Oh, I stepped up too far in the pocket. Stepped up too in the far. You want, you want to step up in the pocket a lot of the time. That way, if you do get sacked, you're only losing a couple yards. And you also want to step up to prevent those edge rushers from having a, uh, a free look at a sack, right? And that, that ends up being usually like a six, seven yard loss. So keep that in mind. That's really good adjustments right there. That's really good adjustments. We're going to throw the ball away. We went back to the same look. Sometimes you want to go back to the same look if it worked to play before. Go back to the same look. See if they change their defense, which they did right there. So definitely a great job by them. But you kind of just want to test it. See if they're going to do it. And if they will, then you'll start to mix it up. If they won't, you can keep going back to that same play. Now, it was man coverage right there with a couple zones. I'm going to pretty much plan on it being the same thing here because it worked for them. If a defense works for somebody, ah, we couldn't get time. They, bl they blitz right there. If, ah, do I want to go for it? I'm going to go for it here. Kicking might be the right play right here. But I want to go for it. It's a far field goal anyways, but we probably could make it. But what I was saying was, if something works for a defense, right? They made certain adjustments and you had to throw the ball away or you got sacked. They're likely going to do the same thing. Reason being is because it worked. So I would probably do the same thing too. If, if that works, I'll probably go back to it. Oh, we're going to have Waller on the outside. Great route from Waller right there. That ended up being a zone. That was not the defense that I expected them to be in. They're doing a great job mixing up right now what they're doing. But again, I was gonna just going to say... I would go back to it too. If a defense works, I would go back to it just because I expect it to work again. I expect our opponent. Nice play again. They're doing a really good job. That was actually looked like it was man to the running back and they sent them. But if something's working, I, I try not to get away from it. That's really the point I'm trying to make here. If something's working, try to stick with it until it stops working. And then we can really start to mix things up here. And I'm not really being able to get a rhythm right now on what they're doing. I'm just trying to put out plays that can beat zone and man because they're doing a great job of mixing up. I think we'll have our post right here. Oh, they got the knockout. I probably should have pass let it down a little bit. I'm going to blame myself on that one for sure. If I pass let down, it's probably open. Now, our players are tired here. I don't really want to... This is the first half. I'm actually going to take a timeout. I'm actually going to take a timeout. That's the second half. I probably would have just waited, 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 got them as, as much energy back as I could. But since it's the first half, we had already taken a timeout. I will take one there just to make sure we get our best play out. This is the third down. And this is going to probably be the difference between a field goal and a touchdown. Because if they stop me here and I don't gain any yards, I'm probably going to uh just kick it we'll see now if i get a few yards i might go for it but they did a great job there with their defense and i didn't do a good job oh we got mclaurin we got mclaurin yes oh okay what i was gonna say was what i was gonna say was i didn't do a good job of pass leading down to avoid those deep zones in the red zone right the, deep, the end zone is gonna push those deep halves down a little bit or those deep thirds or whatever deep zones they have out there because they have nowhere back to go now when they're on the rest of the field they can just keep dropping back, keep dropping back, keep dropping back in their zone. But the end zone is going to keep them there. It's going to keep them closer. So you have to pass it a little bit different ways. Avoid those zones. Oh, I didn't get my adjustment in. I, I wanted to put a player in the flat there. Nice dot. Really nice dot. I didn't get my adjustments in. That's, they're doing that audible from trips tight end offset to bunch. And it's throwing me off a little bit. It's slowing down my adjustments. We have it here. But it's slowing me down a little bit just because I'm not used to what they're doing. And I'm having to kind of prepare for both, which is why this is an effective thing to do. 
I'm preparing for trips tied down offset the entire time they're in their formation. But once they make that audible, I have to kind of change what I'm doing because it's completely different uh, plays, right? They're going to be doing different things out of these formations. Ooh, ooh, that, that run play actually looked there. That run play looked there. This is a big third down. I said it in the last game. I'll say it here again. In a key spot in the game when they're on a third down like this, they're likely going to go to their best play. And I want to note what that best play is going into the rest of the game, right? So the play that they go to here is likely going to be a play that they go to later on. So keep that in mind. And what they got here? The crosser. I'm watching this running back. That's a laser. That's a laser. That is a laser. Now we know, though, they have that crosser that can beat, uh, like, default flat zone. I don't even have a flat zone there that time, but it can beat it. So I'm going to put 20 on the flat just to prevent them from doing that anymore, and I will be ready to put that zone out there. I actually did have a flat out there. I think I had a cloud, but, again, that's not going to stop that. So keep that in mind. I'm stuck on the wrong player. Stuck on the wrong player at a quick height. So that's what I'm saying. I'm, gonna have to, I'm having to adjust for trips tight end offset. But then I, once they flip or they audible, that just throws me off, and I have to continue to try to work for the next formation they're going to. Going back to this bunch here, watching for it. We actually are going to have our... Oh, I didn't get the purple in. I didn't get the purple in, so I'm watching for the crosser. All right, they don't have one. Dot. Dot. We're getting dotted. We're getting dotted right now, and we're not doing the best job of it. Honestly, what I'm going to do here, this is what I'm going to do. So when they audible a bunch, it's usually to the wide side. So I'm going to turn auto flip off, and I'm just going to make sure I come out with the, the slot corner to the wide side like this. Now, if they audible a bunch now, it's actually going to be on the short side, but they stay in the trip side. Of the side. That's good. Oh, read option. Okay, that's another, that's another coach adjustment we're going to change now. I try to keep my defensive coach adjustments pretty much default to start a game, but as my opponent shows something, I probably should do the option defense conservative every game but once they show me that read option i usually will change it so if they play the qb the rest of my defense and i can kind of just worry about the running back myself running back's mine right here outside good job good tackle i was able to get a running start at that because i was just trying to get over to make sure i was lurking it there but this is third down i'm gonna call timeout that way we we make sure we save time and it kind of forces them here into a tough spot they can either run the ball take most of the clock down take three or they can pass the ball, but if they end up throwing the ball away, what they probably could do is pass the ball. If nothing's open, take a sack. But if they end up throwing the ball away, that saves us time and allows us a chance at three here. So keep that in mind. Watching this running back. Oh, that was nice. That was nice. They were able to get a completion and stay in bounds. But they're actually gonna go for it. What I was gonna say is they can take the, pretty much most of the clock here and make sure I have a yellow on both sides. We have a hard flat out to the left to watch anything going, going across the field. And they're going to probably, yeah, th this is smart. They're going to wait as long as they can to take the rest of this clock so that if we do get a stop, or even if we don't get a stop, if they get a first down, it leaves us pretty much no time to get points. And yeah, that, that was a really, really smart play. They do that in the NFL a lot. They'll go no huddle, make you think they're going for it, take it all the way down to the one and call timeout. So we'll see what they're going to do here. Whichever one they make, honestly, it's not the wrong play. I might even go for it here. But yeah, they're, they're actually going to go for it. Either one's really not the wrong play, in my opinion. You can kind of... Do whatever you whatever you think is right in this in this position but we're gonna do the same thing here we have those hook curls we don't have to worry about anything uh, going over the top we, we are shaded over top to make sure we don't get a pressing just get beat quickly off the line we have a hard flat to the left to stop any short passes passes to the left that might beat man or from that running back and we'll just see what they put out there here we got the slant yes and that's that hook curl that's the hook curl making the play let's see if we can go get ah i wasn't able to do anything with it but that's cool that's what the hook curl did right there it stopped those short routes we were able to get a stop. I think it's it's their ball at halftime. So maybe taking three there is the right play just because it puts them within one possession. But I honestly might have gone for it too. They had timeouts. So just in case they did get it, they had time. Things could have went well for them. They went have got a, a, a seven there before half. So tough, tough decision there. I probably would have went for it too. That's going to be it for this half. We'll see what we can do going in the second half. We'll see if we can get a stop. Oh, it got me again. It got me again. Good tackle. It got me again. I... I, I have to figure something out for this audible because what it is that they're doing is really just throwing me off. Actually, I've changed my mind. I said before I was going to keep the slot corner on the wide side. I'm actually just going to keep it on the right because it seems like they're keeping their trips on the left. And when they audible, so I don't want it like this for the trips. But when they audible, it allows me, there we go, just like that. It allows me to have my defense set up the way that I want. I want that slot corner to be on the bunch side, just like that. And, and that way, I don't have to worry about my adjustments too much. Go hide. Let's go hide. Good tackle. I don't have to worry about my too, mu too many adjustments when they audible because that's what's been giving me trouble, right? Whenever they audible, I don't get my adjustments in and then they get to hike without me being set up the way that I want to. So that's the changes we're going to make here. 
I have to watch this right side though. If they hike the ball to trips, I have to watch this right side if the running back's doing anything other than just a table rock because we have a hard flat out there. So, but other than that, when they audible, it's going to help me a lot more to come out in this way. So I'll, that's just kind of the benefits I'll take. Watching the, oh, that was a dot. That was a laser. Good play. I'm more worried about the audible to bunch adjusting than I am here. It's really just picking whichever one you want to be prepared for. I think that we'll be able to uh, do a better job uh, against the trip side and be, not being set up than we would be against this bunch. That's just my personal opinion. So we're going to set up for bunch every time. And if they stay in the trip side on offset, that's fine too. Oh, I, I overran it. I overran it. That's my fault. That's my fault. Oh, Derrick Henry is running, running well. All right. So that time they actually just came out in the bunch and we didn't do a good job for it. I'm actually going to try to stop that route with a little bit of cross man here. It looks like they're coming out in this bunch now right away because we were adjusting for it before already. So they're going to probably just get rid of that trips tight end offset audible and just stay in the bunch. All right. So we have the purple on the crosser side here. We have the running back manned up. That's a dot. That looked like flood. So what flood is is a very popular play out of bunch right now with a deep in on the on the one side and then a deep out on the other. So what I'm going to do right here is I'm actually going to put a vert hook. Okay, they ran the ball. I'm actually going to put a ooh Derrick Henry. Derrick Henry is doing great. All right. Great job from them. We didn't do a great job defensively, but I'm going to start adjusting for flood. If someone's using a play and one play is hurting you the most more than any other play, they're not just running one play, but one play is the most effective against you, which has been flood. I'm just going to start adjusting for that one play and just trying to go from there. So they've been running flood with the deep in, with the deep out. We're just going to try to adjust from that play and go from there. But defense here isn't the main concern. The main concern right now is trying to make sure that we get a score on this drive. I actually missed my crosser. Making sure we get a score on this drive, especially if we can get seven. If we can get seven, we'll be in a great position to win this game because we'll be up two possessions. It'll probably be late in the half. It'll probably be in the fourth quarter. Unless we scored really, really quick, it'll probably be in the fourth quarter. So getting seven here is the priority, right? We'll worry about defense when we get back on defense, but if we can get a seven here, we'll be in a good spot. I didn't notice a hard flat to the left that last time, so I put a table, but they actually had the they had the hard flat that time. I'm just trying to read what they're doing. I'm basing my play setups on what they're doing the play before. So the play before, there was no hard flat to the right or to the tight end side. And so I put a table out there to try to take advantage of that, right? But they put a hard flat that time. So they're just mixing up their defense really, really well. So it's not really allowing me to kind of see what they're doing and prep from it for the, uh, from there. We should have the crossing route this time, I think. Oh, great job, Diggs. Just barely getting over that. That was not a default purple, it looked like to me. That looked like maybe it was um 15, probably 15. So Diggs was able to get over top of that there. Are they going to quit out? This has been a great game. All right, they didn't quit out. So what we're going to continue to try to do here is just try to figure out what zones they're going to put out there and try to put whatever play is going to beat those zones. So I'm trying to catch them where that hard flat's not out there. The one time that I thought I saw that there was no hard flat out there, we didn't have anything to go in that area. So I've been trying to put table routes. I'm actually going to put an out route this time from the tight end. If they don't put that hard flat there, we'll be able to get a good chunk of yards on that. Oh, we're going to have the post. We're going to have the post. Oh, we barely got the pass off. I think that was Gunslinger. If we don't have Gunslinger right there, I do not know if we get that pass off. Now we're up two scores. It's in the fourth quarter. It's pretty much the same scenario as last game where what we're going to try to do here is try to prevent them from getting a quick score. If we can do that, we'll be in a great position. So I'm doing the same thing here. I'm preparing for flood. We have a vert hook to stop that uh, in route, and I'm watching any uh, out routes. Not, it wasn't flood this time. It wasn't flood this time. Can we make a play? Come on, Nice knockout. Nice knockout. I'm preparing for flood, and I'm preparing for bunch. I'm going to come out with my slot corner. You see, we don't have auto flip on because we're able to flip here. I'm coming out with my slot corner to the right every single time, planning on them making that audible. If they don't make that audible, we will just, we'll just have to adjust from there without being the slot corner on the correct side. It'll be okay. It's not ideal, but it's kind of what we have to do right here. They're going to have that pose. Oh, they had to roll out. They had to roll out. They looked like they were going to have that tight end post there, but LT shed. That's nothing of my doing there. That's just LT making a play, forcing them to roll out. All right, they're going to the bunch now. We have the vert hook. We have the purple to stop the crosser, and we should be able to stop both plays watching the out route. The vert hook did a good job right there. Ooh, I, I bounced. I thought it was going to be a playmaker. I thought it was going to be a playmaker. I was more worried about a playmaker than giving up the uh, the short yardage gain there. It wasn't really short yardage, but it wasn't going to give him a first down, right? Fourth and seven, probably going to be their best play. I'm going to prepare on it being flood here, but I am going to have a purple outside just in case as well. And we have, a, we have a deep blue in the middle just to make sure we don't get beat deep over the top. We're shaded up. I'm watching this right side. It was flood. It was flood. Great job. Great job by the man, the man press right there. Just guarding it long enough for us to get out there. Micah Hyde did a great job jumping and we're able to get the pick right there. 
We prepared for it being flood. If it was a different play and they picked it up, and that's actually going to be the game. Great game to our opponent. That was a fun one. I hope you all enjoyed it. That's going to do it for the video. If you enjoyed this type of video where I talked a lot, I actually felt like I was rambling a little bit. If you all enjoy that type of video, please let me know. If you don't, we can go back to the old way where I do editing on every single video. We're still going to edit on the other ones, but for Chaos Coaches, I think this could be a little bit better format, less editing. It allows it to be longer because I don't have to worry about editing a longer video that takes a little bit longer time. I can get out more content this way. Whatever it is that you all want to do, let me know. If you did enjoy the video, please remember to like, comment, subscribe. Take it easy. Peace. And that's going to do it for this Chaos Coaching. I'll see you all in the next one.